What resilience means to you? Purely not giving up, just being aware that even when we think that the world could be falling apart and it's easier to quit, find strength within ourselves to just keep going. Keep going with the best attitude we could have. Four years ago, I decided to do a PhD about digital nomadism. I quit my life as a university lecturer, my relationship, I bought a van. Resilience is not just a word. You have to have the skills and the strength to build that resilience within you first. To find that resilience and to be okay with starting from zero, to uh, believe in yourself again and to believe that you can do it. If you're going through challenges in your life, that has to make you stronger when it comes to resilience and build up on your spirituality is because there is a cult bigger than you think and you have to go through the process. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Beyond Marketing, the podcast. I'm Mara Genovese, I'm the founder and CEO of MG Power Global Integrated Market Agency. Today, we will explore the transformative journey of a digital nomad and content creator who dared to leave the comfort of her life back in Colombia, moved to Australia at 17 years old and hit the Australian road. Join us as we talk about the challenge, triumphs and insights of living a life guided by resilience, purpose, boundless and creativity. To co-host this episode with me, of course, nonetheless, would be only Andrea, our incredible senior innovation manager at MG Empower. She knows everything about the creator. She's passionate about, you know, the world of, you know, influencer, how they thrive, how they engage with brands. And I could not be more happy to have you, Andrea, with me on this podcast. Thank you, Mai. It's been a long time since we've done this together. Is it the together. first one? No, it's the third one. The third one? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so But welcome back. Thank you so much. Um, and in today's episode, we are joined by the incredible Alejandra Ramirez, a fearless digital nomad, travel content creator, and author with over one million followers across social media. Alejandra's journey from leaving her comfort zone and embracing the world is a testament of resilience and the power of dreaming big. So get ready to be inspired by her story of transformation, empowerment, and living, the per and living with purpose. Joining us from Colombia, welcome to the Beyond Marketing Podcast. Alejandra, how are you doing? Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm really good. So nice to meet you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Welcome. I'm so excited about this uh, conversation. And when Andrea was reading, you know, the intro to you, something that already caught to my attention. There's a lot of things about you that I am obsessed and I want to know more. But now, again, at the beginning of this intro, there's one word that really resonated with me a lot, which is resilience. Before you get to be intro to our audience, describe for me what resilience means to you. Well, I think to me, it's purely not giving up, just being aware that even when we think that the world could be falling apart and it's easier to quit, we still have strength and find strength within ourselves to just keep going, keep going with the best attitude we could have. And I think for me, there has been a lot of moments that I need that I had to find resilience and just sort of like put my head down in a way, really quickly have my best um, thinking and positive attitude and just pick myself up and put again myself in the road that I want to to take. Um, but it takes a lot of skills, I guess, to to find that resilience and to be okay with starting from zero to uh, believe in yourself again and to believe that you can do it because when life throws things at you i think the easiest thing is to just be like oh whatever i'll just choose something else but if you just carry on i think it's a better reward at the end of the of the journey i love that and i already love you because for me life is all about resilience but you're completely right resilience is not just a word you have to have the skills and the strength to build that resilience within you first And it's not 
something that happens overnight. So it's a work that you have to do. So well done for that. And uh, before we start going into more details, I would love you to intro yourself to our audience, where you are right now, how long have you been traveling, how do you start your career as a content creator, just like a small intro so that our audience can get a sense and feeling of what the conversation is going to be, you know, engaged okay. with you. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you everyone who's here uh, listening. I am very happy. Um, I am originally from Colombia and I moved 16 years ago to Australia on my own to learn English. That was the initial goal. Um, then I it went through a couple of things that we'll go through later. But I had a career as a graphic designer and product designer. I had um, the possibility to get my residency. Then things fall apart. I was I had to leave Australia. Then I came back. I did a company to sponsor myself. It was the only way to stay. And then I ended up getting my residency through my company. Um, decided to study um, um, a master's degree in tourism. Um, sustainable tourism and after that master's I go first class and thanks to that I got a scholarship to do a PhD so about four years ago I decided to do a PhD about digital nomadism I quit my life as a university lecturer my relationship I bought a van I built it all the van myself in about four months and then I decided to become full-time a digital nomad and that's how I started to be a content creator out of research and it's been now four years of this journey and i absolutely love it <laughs> that's really quick <laughs> wow that it's amazing so but you went to australia four years ago and then you 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 stayed there four years as a digital nomad and then no it... so i moved to australia 16 years ago Okay. So when I was 17 okay. and I decided to stay in Australia to do my, um, my life, just to okay, do my career it. down the track, uh, I spent four years doing my degree. And when I graduated, graphic design was on the list to become resident, Australian resident. For me, it wasn't a big deal. I was like, yeah, if I can do it, if I can get it, I love it. I loved Australia. But it wasn't my dream goal to stay there. But because design was on the list, I said, I'm going to apply. In the meantime, I decided to go traveling around the world for about one year. Meanwhile, the process of the residency was getting through. Uh, I was in Kenya doing a volunteer at an orphanage. And I had received a letter from immigration saying, we need graphic designers. In order for you to get the residency, you need to work for one year as a graphic designer. So please come back. So I finished my trip and I moved to Australia again after that year that I took as a, as a gap year after graduating from uni. I got a job in Melbourne as a junior graphic designer and I started working there full time because it was part of the requisite that immigration needed. 10 months down the track, so only two months until I was getting my year experience, they sent a letter and they said to me, you know what? We no longer need graphic designers. Uh -huh. All careers with uh, all applications with this career have been canceled. You've got 28 days to leave the country. And I was absolutely devastated. My world was just like upside down. I was like, what, what am I going to do now? Like, I don't want to go home. It's been back then was already like five years in Australia. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to move to Hong Kong. <laughs> because Hong Kong didn't need visa, like as a Colombian, I didn't need a visa to get to Hong Kong. So I said, I'm going to move to Hong Kong and I'm going to apply for a new visa and I'm going to come back and I'm going to get my residency no matter what. My family was like, just come back to Colombia. That's it. Just come back to Colombia. You've got your support here. You know what Latin families are like, you know, like we'll help yeah. you. You'll get a job. And I was like, mm -mm, this country is not kicking me out without a really strong reason because I deserve to be here. So I literally pack all my things in a container, got a little backpack, and I moved to Hong Kong. And the bad thing is when I moved to Hong Kong, they stopped me in immigration and they oh. put me into a room. And for almost eight hours, they wouldn't let me leave. Mm -hmm. They did a search scan to see if I had cocaine in me. They searched my butt and uh, they would put me on hold because there is a little island next to Hong Kong that is called Macau. 
and Macau has the biggest um, prostitution from women from Colombia. And they thought I was coming to work as a prostitute in Macau. Wow. So they put me on hold. And only when they gave me internet, I was able to get quickly and talk to my supervisor and my um, previous employee and get them to do a letter saying that I had a university degree and that I had a job. And only when um, in the immigration in Hong Kong saw this, they let me through. So that first step in Hong Kong, I was like crying because I got kicked out of Australia, crying because I, they wouldn't let me in because they thought that I was um, a prostitute. And long story short, it took me a month to get my new student visa. And then when I got it, I was able to come back to Australia. Um, and then it was like starting from zero after five years. Like, how am I going to stay here? What are my opportunities? There were only three of them. It was either studying something that the government needed, but that involved a lot of money and I didn't have any money. I spent all my money on leaving and coming back, getting a sponsorship from a company. And to get a sponsorship, you need to be in a salary of over 75,000. And there's no way a graphic designer will do that. You know, like we were in the 40 bracket or getting married to an Australian. And I was madly in love with a Brazilian. So there was no choice. <laughs> there was no way I was going to get um, quickly a new boyfriend. So what I decided to do was to start my own company and only rely on myself and on my skills and make sure that I can make enough money to cover the salary that I needed to get. And that's how I did it. So I created Maverick Studio Provider Limited, uh, which is a marketing company and like digital media company. And I started to work so much for four years until I could nominate myself, get myself a sponsorship, do two years of a sponsorship. I had to employ three Australians, GST, superannuation, all the legal stuff. And that's how I became an Australian resident and eventually a citizen. That is resilience. <laughs> yeah. That's what I call <laughs> resilience, you know, passion, hard work and, uh, and, and, and well done. That is the, it's Thank amazing. You. Yeah. I'm not going to say it was easy. I did cry a lot and I wanted to quit many times. I bet most of you, because we are immigrants, we know all the battles that we deal through. It's not only the language barrier, the understanding, you know, the family, and especially Australia is so far, it's so far. It's not like you can get a plane and in a few hours be back home. Like it takes you two days, sometimes three days to get back home. So I think there's a lot of things that you fight, but for some reason for me, everything just went behind. And like my only priority was to just get it done get and it done. work as much as I can to achieve all the things I needed to tick for immigration. And the funny thing is the day I got my citizenship was the same day I got my house. I bought a house, um, I land and I built a tiny home and, you know, I was going through the process of building the home and getting my last years of my citizenship sorted. And that same year I had both things at the same time. The two hardest things in my life, I lost half of my hair. And then the day they got me the invitation for the ceremony, the landlord, the, um, the company, construction company said, your house is ready, come for the key. So I went to the ceremony, got my citizenship certificate, went to the post office, took a picture to take my passport, then went to the real estate, they gave me the key, and I walked into my new house with no money whatsoever to even have a mattress, but I had a house and I had my citizenship. So my friends got me a mattress, and I just remember in the living room with a mattress, with a glass of wine, just being like, wow it's been the hardest two years of my it. life and wow, i managed to get a, both in the same day it was very, awesome very inspirational story wow. so amazing well done but then after going through all of that then you became a digital nomad first of all like that's that's how the transition that i'm very keen to understand from going through all of that you know creating your own business being a you know a, a creative designer fighting for your citizenship, getting your home and going through all you have. And then you became a digital nomad, an incredible creator with almost 1 million followers. And your content is, is, is incredible. It's very inspirational. I love the Thursday people, by the way, carry on doing that because it's, uh, it's beautiful. 
And then you created your own van and you drive her van and you go around and you take picture and you're getting the community, people are comment, people are engaging with you. They want to know more about you. So how that transition came into fruition? Because now you're a, you're a digital creator. So it, 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 it took you to one place to another one in an amazing sure. way, because it looks like it was very organic. You didn't plan, I'm gonna be a digital creator nomad. So for, for me, like watching you on Instagram felt, feels like it was a process. You want to experience that and end up in being something that engage with people and then you became a digital creator. That's how I see it, but of course, you need to tell us. Yeah. <laughs> It was a 180 degree change in my life that I was not expecting. So when I got my citizenship, I became a full time lecturer at Griffith University in Australia, in Queensland. And I was teaching six subjects of graphic design. And because I did my master's degree, I got a first class. So I had that. I was on top of the of the graduates because I made a book that is called uh, Travel with a Purpose, and it's a journal for um, travelers to be more conscious travelers. And, um, and I also did a finance mini course so people can learn how to save money and travel because those were the two main questions on my master's. How do you travel so much? Are you rich? Do you have a sugar daddy? Is your father doing all these things? And people didn't realize that we just need to save. I think we need to have priorities. And I've always been really savvy with my money. I had like many different ways of passive income and I had the business and I had like at a stage four or five different jobs, but people always think of the easy way. So for me, my outcome of my master's was no, you just need to really learn to love money, to learn how to save, to have a better relationship. And out of those two things that I made, that's how I got my uh, first class and I got a full scholarship for my PhD. But I've been studying for over 10 years, you know, like my degree, then the master's, I did honors as well. So I decided I'm not gonna do my PhD. This was in 2019, I'm gonna put on hold. and I just wanna go traveling the world for a year. I had saved almost like $45,000 and I said, I'm just gonna put that money to go traveling around the world. And then I was in Colombia, came back to Australia, um, I was teaching and I was getting ready to start my world trip again. And then the pandemic came and COVID was like, no, Miss Yella, you're not going anywhere. You are going to, you're going to stay in Australia because Australia was one of the hardest countries and they just completely shot. No one could leave the island. And I was like, okay, I need to travel because I'm not a person that stays in one spot. So I'm going to do my PhD, but I'm going to choose my PhD on something that I love, which is traveling. How do I combine traveling design and what the future holds and what the world is throwing at us, which is you need to work from home. So I started researching and there were not many PhDs about digital nomadism. There were a few. There was not much research behind. So I put a proposal to university and I say, look, we're getting graduates that are not working as a designers or creatives. They're going back working at normal jobs that you will have when you're a student. We need to understand why university is not keeping up with the changes of technology and how the world is evolving and why so many people are just being nomads and they don't even study at university. So what's happening out there? So I said, um, I want to know and I want to study why digital nomadism is the future of the creative industry. And I put a proposal, they approved it. And then I said, okay, hey, I'm going to quit being a university lecturer after almost 10 years. I had my tiny home. I had a partner for about three years. And I said to everyone, I'm just going to quit. <laughs> I'm going to get a van and I'm going to build my new home exactly how I want it. With 22 plants in there, with macrame on the wall and like with a marble kitchen because it's going to be my home. And all my friends were like, are you crazy? Marmol is too heavy. And I was like, I don't care. I want to make it beautiful. So I started the journey of doing the van. I named her Mostaza. I had no idea about plumbing, electricity, <laughs> carpentry, oh, anything. I YouTube everything. And I also had friends who on the weekend will come and I will be a beard and pig size on me. 
just help me whatever you can. So I was building the van as I go, maybe three, three or four days a week. And the other days I was teaching online because this is in the middle of the pandemic. So no one was outside. I had an opportunity to use the university workshop, which was really good for me because I had a drop saw there, sanding machine, like all the big machines that I needed that usually I wouldn't have. And my house was a tiny home, so I didn't have a space to build a whole van in there. So I think almost like the whole war universe wanted me to go through this process in the pandemic and gave me all the tools, people, time to do it. After almost four months, it was three months and three weeks, I had a brand new home. And I had already said to university, I'm quitting. I rent my whole tiny home to new people and I had all my plans and I started on a journey on my own. So uh, the goal was to be a researcher. So for the first year, I lived out of my savings, the 40,000 that I had to travel the world, I lived of that. And I also lived of the um, scholarship. The scholarship money is very little. It was just enough to pay for petrol and maybe a couple of things. But my goal was just to understand how this world works, you know, purely how how do people make money? How do people do all these things? Uh, so I started driving, driving around the coast of Australia and uh, then down south. Um, and that's how my first year was. The second year, I realized, okay, there is opportunity to make money these different ways. I'm going to jump into being a content creator. And to be honest, it was like rocket. Like I had my Instagram account, people fall in love with the story, with, I guess, maybe how genuine, like I'm really bad at throwing flowers at myself, but I believe that was kind of like the starting point of why the community started to be engaged. The fact that I was a woman on my own doing these things, there was a lot of media reach, um, especially in South America. So everyone was just contacting me and I started to become Alejandro Travels. And literally it's been three and a half years um, as a nomad and I've grown so much. This year, this final year, it has been the year that I've actually made the same or almost the same amount of money as a university lecturer. So for me, it was like, wow, it's my full-time job now I live out of this and in a way it's been a process of learning lots of ups and downs because I'm also I've got TD, ADHD sorry I was going to say in Spanish and I've also a past person so very sensitive so for me it's been like a learning curve about you know how the world works um, the whole finances how content creators work uh, different ways of making money also how your brain has to switch constantly from new places where you travel. And it has been incredible challenge, but absolutely magical. No, I like you, you are without words. You are, le you wow. left us without words, Ale. And it's like incredible that we also had the opportunity to work with you, Ale, through campaigns. Yes. Um, and I've got to say, um, Alejandra is one of the most professional creators I've ever worked with. Like, oh. Yeah, no, it's, it's true because we've been through many challenges through different campaigns and you meet different creators and everyone is different, but the level of professionalism, I know you don't, you're not good at throwing flowers at you, so we will throw them at you <laughs> because that's what women should do, throw flowers at each other, yeah, each other. empower each other. Um, and I would love to hear more from you on advice for creators because from an outside perspective, when you see content creators that are travelers and that leave out of travel content, it looks so comfortable and like so aspiring and glamorous. and glamorous but people don't know the behind the scenes that goes into creating this content creating a community ale has like 4.6 percent of engagement rate so high which is really high which is incredible is it? i have no idea <laughs> where do you check this uh, we have tools <laughs> but yeah Ale and like I want to understand and I'm sure that their audience our audience would love to understand like how do you build a community that is so responsive to your content and to who you are but also what what responsibility do you feel with them and with the content that you put out and with the brands also that will start working with you Andre I I actually think it's been an extremely genuine growth for me because in my mind, 
there was never I want to be an influencer, I want to be famous, I want to be known. It has never been about that. For me, it was a research. For me, it was like, I just want to understand how this world works. And I think my growth has been very community based because people felt related with my story, especially women. You know, I I never really asked myself where I got the being so independent. I mean, OK, with money and how I manage my traveling, how I'm not scared of being alone or traveling alone. Uh, but a lot of people feel that way, you know, so. I started to realize actually quite late after maybe a year of doing this that a lot of women and maybe some men felt like maybe that's what also what I want to do what I want to learn how it happened one of the things that I discover after a lot of journaling because I do a lot of journaling is that I base a lot of my country on my sorry my content on education because I'm a teacher it's all I've known I've known for over 10 years to be a teacher. So a lot of what I share and I do is mostly education. And I think when you give those tools to people, you're giving something else than content and is they can have a take in. I believe that is a really strong responsibility as a creator and also as a consumer to know what you are surrounding yourself with. Because there is a lot of incredible creators that maybe have a different content that is not as maybe in 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 depth you know and that's okay because we all look for in social media we all look for different things we have those pages that make us laugh that make us cry we have the puppies the babies the educational for me my strong belief was i want just to be me and ali has so many versions of her and i don't want to just be in one version you know i have my guerrera version which is like the powerful, I can take over the world. I have my um, entrepreneur side, I have my teacher side, my fun. I love parties and uh, festivals. I'm also an auntie, I'm a sister. So for me, it's more like, I'm not just one thing and one thing doesn't define me. I'm a bunch of all these different versions of me that makes me me. And I think because of that, more people started being okay with the idea you know what, we don't need to be just one version. We could be many versions of ourselves. So I have always shared content that is me, genuine, like for example, um, as soon as I wake up, exactly how I am. And then sometimes I'm more dolled up, pretty, and looking like a model, like I like to think. Um, and I'm okay with sharing all the different versions. I think probably that's why I have a community that is so beautiful and engaged and like, connected because I've shared just who I am, how I am, the good and the bad. I try to concentrate mostly on positive things. I'm not really a person that goes there throwing hate at the haters because I think in social media we all have haters. And even though those people do hurt you, I believe my responsibility is not to spread the hate, but to tackle people directly. So sometimes if I have haters that come to me with comments, at the beginning, our ego is like, you know, you have to say these things and these people, but that's our ego. So for me, it's more like each person is commenting from their own world and their own perspective. What if this person has never traveled? What if this person has never lived the house? What if they never had the education? So for me, it's more like, this is not how it is. This is my explanation directly to the person. And you have two options. They either understand and reflect or they throw more hate at you. And that's when you realize, okay, there's nothing else I can do goodbye you know so on social media I started to learn that it is not just my world like I'm sure in my world but each person has its individual world and comment and reflects and connect from their own experiences so I believe just connecting through the best is what's been helping me but I'm still in the journey of understanding because that's my research as well I'm actually presenting my pre-thesis in about a month and this is the aspect that I'm going through at the moment, you know, like what are those things that have got you to where you are at the moment? Um, so I really think genuine, being genuine is being one of them, being as real as you can and being open to opportunities. Like I never say no to opportunities. I've always been like anyone like, oh, let's do this. Yeah, let's do it. I'll let this thing. OK, let's do it because you never know what that's going to get you. And also because I'm learning, you know, like you learn from every opportunity. Some might be good. Some might turn really bad, 
But a lot of these little opportunities have taken me to other things, you know, like invitations to maybe other media channels or um, newspapers or an incredible friendship. I had my best friends, I've made them through social media. So you never know, I guess just being open. Yeah, and I, I, I one, you know, thing that I've, you know, I've, I'm sure I'm older than you <clears throat> and feel that I think that I've, I've learned through, you know, through my life and, you know, through my journey about the hate, the comments, the cancellation. And sometimes we, with the, you know, with the social media, it this became, you know, more, let's say, out there because people can easily go comment, you know, cancel you or, you know, saying awful things to you. But the hating, the bullying, all those things always exist even before social media. But what happened with social media, why this is became a bigger thing? But what, it's not just because today there's so many forums that you can comment, you know, that mm -hmm. is not just Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. So there's so many other channels and forums that people go and complain and, you know, put in a lot of hate out of you. It's, you know what is easier today for people to do that? Because the majority of the time they can be anonymous and yeah, they and they hide between you. because it's so easy to throw hate towards people being anonymous and when you have that something that you know my mentors you know always says to me is that it's nothing to do with you is that then to do with the person because yeah. when hate is thrown at you judgment or anything is never about you is about the person that is actually talking about you. So, yeah. because you're doing an amazing work and you're mm -hmm. so talented, just again, just my piece of advice, I think it's great that you're responding to them, but if you don't feel like you responded, just don't respond, just send good positive energy towards them because at the end of the day, it's never going to be about you, it's going to be about the people and the person. Uh, but your stories is, is just so uh, inspirational and my curiosity is do you think you found your purpose now through this journey do you think now your purpose is this where you're doing now digital nomad doing research as you travel mm -hmm. you know inspiring people through story uh, you know spreading that thought and mindset of resilience, positivity. Do you think you're in a place where you go and say, okay, I've been through all of that of during my journey because I'm very young, but now I feel like all the journey that I've been through was to let me to the point I am right now? Or do you see that you still need to search for that purpose or you think you're, you're there? I think the purpose has changed every year and I'm finally okay with that. So I think for, for many years, I'm a very spiritual person. So for many years you're in that search, you know, like, what am I good at? Uh, what's my purpose? How I'm going to achieve something? How I'm going to leave my mark in this world. And I realized about seven years ago when I started my spiritual journey, that that was too much for my head thinking of one specific thing. So I started to develop a yearly purpose. And for me, it was like, okay, what's going to be my purpose this year? Like, how do I want to impact myself or others? And then that just made it much easier. And it was more like, and I was okay with the fact that sometimes the purpose changed. So when I was a teacher, my purpose was to educate. And I was so happy about being the best teacher I could and like engaging with the students and creating these new graphic design machines that could conquer the world. And then slowly, you know, when I had my master's, my purpose was to make the best um, the, um, travel with a purpose journey journals for other travelers to be more conscious and learn about sustainability and have better trips and be more careful with the world. And then that changed. So I guess for me as a nomad, my purpose is still evolving as I evolved. So initially was, I want to be the best learner about the world, about the digital nomad world. And then when I felt that right now, I felt like I sucked a lot of information. 
and I feel ready to like now share this. So my new purpose for this year is to teach again. So it goes back on circles, you know, because I'm a sponge. Like I love to learn, process, work it all with myself, and then I'm ready to like throw it at the world. So I think this year for me, it's been all about, okay, how can I share this? And how can I get more people to realize that there are many other opportunities out there and it's not just specifically certain types of jobs, especially in Latin America. I guess when you leave Latin America or developing countries, you realize that you could do whatever you want. You know, like in Australia, in London, in the States, it's like, oh, you know what? Yeah, I could have whatever I want. I could achieve whatever I want because there are more opportunities. In Latin America, we're stuck in many things. You know, our minds, our families, I think the family thing is a huge issue because parents don't want kids to leave. It's like, I look after you until you're married. It's like, no, leave, you know, like learn, explore, travel, make mistakes. So for me, my main purpose right now is to educate other women, especially in Latin America. So I actually had a shift on my PhD and I decided to change the topic for that. It's like, I want to focus on Latin Americans wanting to explore, remote work, being nomads. It doesn't have to be that you're traveling all the time, but it's more like you can realize that you can have a better life. Because I feel the world just went too quick, too fast. You know, technology, um, you know, in artificial intelligence, all these things. And it's like, hang on, let's put a stop. Let's go back a couple of steps. What is that we actually need as humans? So I'm trying right now to mix and combine that balance between having a good life, enjoying it actually not being present you know just not just for the show which happens a lot on social media and also showing others that they can do that but maybe in a year my purpose might change and i think that's the main learning for me is um everyone is in that search as well of purpose because it gives us meaning to our lives but it's okay that the purpose change and it's okay that you might realize you know that's no longer me i might find a new route because we are constantly evolving. So I'm very happy with what it is right now and what this year will be. I'm hoping to finish my PhD this year as well. And then I think after that, it's going to be like, I'm done with Australia, first of all, after 16 years. I'm like, I no longer feel connected with the country. I was battling that for a very long time, but I finally went like, you know what? It's okay to just not be connected anymore to a country that I've spent the last 16 years. Um, and I'm ready for something new. And then I, I will have a new purpose of what that will be. I have no idea, <laughs> but I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> what a lesson. Like this episode is such a big lesson of like dream big. It's okay to dream big. It's okay yeah. to take risks also and embrace uncertainty, embrace jumping outside of your comfort zone. The only thing you, yeah, the only thing that is out there is learning. And Life that's... Is, yeah. Life is too short. That is so sure. we need to live the present, as you said, right? Because I think it's, a, it's, about, it's about to dream and it's about to live the present because uh, to dream and be anxious for the future, you're missing the present. So I think it's how to combine your future dream but not forgetting that you have a present to be, right. to be lived. Um, yeah. So I think it's just like uh, I love when you said about like because I I am on a journey as well of refining <clears throat> a few you know not purpose I would say but it's just like you know everyone has a story right has a you know a story to tell but it's sometimes we lack as a human being because we get you know we have our day to day and work and study and family and parenting and etc that sometimes you 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 don't value your story as much as you should in the sense that your story can help others right and uh and i love what you said that you wanted to now potentially looking back to your journey to your process and how can you empower and use your story to empower other women in latin america 
And I love that. It's something that, you know, I'm on that journey as well of like how I can, you know, empower other women on that journey of being a female leader, a female entrepreneur, because I've been through you know, a lot of challenges the past year that made me reconsider that if I need to add one more <laughs> purpose into, into my story, and then how can I, because I feel now it's sometimes within our stories, it, it gives you a, you know, a, a, a sense on, especially on the spirituality that you said that I love as well, that is if you're going through challenge in your life, that has to make you stronger when it comes to resilience and build up on your spirituality is because there is a cult bigger than you think and you have to go through the process, you have to go to the challenge because you need to help others through the process that you've been chosen to be going through. And then I think that's what you're doing and, is, uh, and, and it is beautiful. And uh, your story, I, I'm sure everyone is, uh, as you know excited as me and andrea listening to your story and congratulations for you know for being so young and and so visionary and so resilient and so empowering mm -hmm. and i think you're going to continue to you know to to help many other people through your story so i think the digital nomad you know uh element of you is just it's just one more with one thing that led you to be who you are today but i think you are beyond your content for knowing you now you're beyond being a digital nomad your cult is it's 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 much bigger i'm very sensitive on the spirituality and i can tell mm -hmm. you that your cult is it's beyond it's like you're oh. doing great as a digital nomad and creator and content you're creative it's beautiful but you're going to be, you know, touching much more life through what you're doing because uh, you're, you're, you're very special. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Do we have time for one last, yes, last just one? Yes, one more. Go for it. I'll, Let's do it. Yeah, because Ali, you love teaching and you love passing on advice, more than advice, like learnings, right? I would love maybe to finish up, if that's okay with you. Um, on what advice would you give, not just entrepreneur, not just women, not just content creators, but anyone who is pursuing a dream, on how to keep pursuing that dream, even like when there are bumps in the road, like keep that force on going for it, and also to keep reaching for new heights, you know, like keep reaching for more, like keep, keep, like keep dreaming bigger and bigger. I think for me, the first one, which is how to keep going even when you feel like the world might be collapsing. For me, what's really helped me is nature and just being connected with myself. I write everything out. I'll show you, like, this is my journal. And I have a journal where I write absolutely everything, how I feel, almost every day. Um, a lot of people think, I don't need therapy, I don't need support, I don't need anything around because I can't do everything. Yes, you possibly can, but this will just make your life much easier. So for me, being in charge of my thoughts and my feelings have really helped me push through. Um, we, are, we really need to understand that mental health and self-love is a thing that is not inserted in us as humans we need to work on it every single day even the most successful person even the most intelligent person knows that through these hard times you need love especially from your own and you need to let go of all the other things that your mind want want you to think you know because it's easier to say you know darkness in the dark but to find the light it's really really hard for me, writing and journaling every day, it has been really good or almost every day where I can just put everything out. Once you put it out, you can see things in a different perspective. Um, second of that, being surrounded by nature, it helps me because I feel in a more connected environment, more neutral, more aligned with who I am. Um, also having therapy. I think therapy is not just for crazy ones how people think i feel a very i feel i'm very strong mentally emotionally 
but I still have someone that is neutral that I talk to about anything. You know, sometimes it doesn't have to be anything bad happening. It's just more how's life or I feel burnout or I feel this way. And just listening and putting it out already is like a huge release. And I think having small goals into the big goal is a must. You know, like if your big goal is to become a nomad, you know, we live in a world that we want everything now, now, immediate this, like now, we just need to now, 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 fast, fast, fast. And we forget to enjoy the process. So what's the point of achieving the house, the residency, being a nomad, traveling the world, if you don't actually enjoy how you got there? So enjoying the process, the step by step, onto those little goals that you have is going to make it more grateful. And if you're grateful, it's going to activate dopamine in your brain. You're going to feel good. And even the hardest battle, you're going to be able to see it through. Because it's like, okay, okay, maybe this little goal, I'm not going to be able to achieve it in a week. It might be two weeks or three months. It's okay. I'm going to enjoy the process and learn how I go through. And I do it with the journaling, with nature, with, um, with therapists as well, or even a coach. And what was the other one that I forgot? The like second part of it? How to keep reaching for new heights, like keep dreaming bigger. I think for me, it's a lot on who you surround yourself. Oh, you know, like if I surround on, myself on spot, on only spot. with other content creators that are on my cell level, same level, then I'm going to feel like I'm good. I'm good. But if I reach higher and if I see other people that are more aspirational, then I'm going to be like, you know what? I could even be there. But it also really depends on what is being successful to you. Because a lot of people might be like, for me, being successful is having a house, a dog, being married, having three kids. For me, being successful is living in a van, enjoying my present and being in nature. So it's very different how we define success. So in order to be able to reach more and more and more things, you really need to ask yourself, how do you define being success and what is that for you? So for me, the meaning of success changes like my purpose, you know, and every year I have something else. So I have, for example, um, I want to reach a certain amount of money or I want to reach a certain following or I want to reach um, a certain goal in my career. And then that's how I define the success in some things that are achievable. Uh, within the time period and I surround myself with people that I feel are aligned to what I want to do. So do I want to start now doing conferences? Do I want to start, a, you know, a teaching journey about digital nomadism? Then all the people that I saw were on my level are, is not is not a thing about being better or higher than them. It's about how I see myself. So uh, you start surrounding yourself with other people that you feel that you are more aligned and more related. And it's slowly you start changing your tribe. And I think that's probably the best way for me to be more driven by the goals and things that I want that are aligned with the current meaning of um, what success is for me. Amazing, Ali. I will uh, end adding into what you said that I could not agree more if you gratitude is the key to anything in life because it really activates our dopamine and people they underestimate gratitude being only be grateful for the good things because it's very easy to be grateful when everything is good when everything is going well but the hard thing is to be grateful for when things are not as good as you would like them to be because that is when things start shifting when you understand that gratitude needs to be doing good times and doing bad times and when you manage to understand that is when dopamine changes the whole cycle energetical cycle of your body because that is how you would be able to create you know your strengths your passion because the, the the gratitude is it's something that everyone should be waking up and going out to bed being grateful for the good and for the bad and then if you're listening to this podcast today trying to do that exercise every single day waking up being grateful go to bed 
being grateful, even if you not have the best day or the best achievement that you like to have that on that day. And you will see how things in life can change like that. Yeah. Ali, you're amazing. As soon as I wake up in the van, it's weird because I have 22 plants in my van, but I wake up in the van and I just open the doors and I scream to the universe. Like it might sound cliche, or for some people, I realize later that some people is like, I never do that or I'm embarrassed, but I don't care. I just open the doors and I just go, ah. <laughs> I love you nature, I love you ocean, I love you sun and it's just that release of like it's really whatever you're everything. holding and like being grateful and then I just stopped and I just get my book and I start writing, get my <laughs> coffee and I think we need that you know like as humans we need to appreciate tiny little things again it may sound cliche I know in the spiritual world there's also a lot of people like doing a lot of these things but it's like try it try it and then you might realize oh you know what it actually helps me in many ways so I absolutely agree with you yeah but again try for the good things and for the bad things because yeah. we as a human being we tend to be grateful only when we see the good but the 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 the, the secret sauce is you have to be for both even yeah, when you're going through that. struggles because then is when you start seeing things shift because it's very easy to say thank you and be grateful when everything is fine but when the universe throw you stuff that you're not really happy about it you need to acknowledge as this is part of my process to get into my purpose and i'm gonna be thankful for, for that as well ali you're amazing and uh, I want to do another podcast with you with a different theme. Uh, and uh, thank you so much. You're like very inspirational. I wish you all the very best. And I really want to meet you in person one day. If you decided to be a digital nomad in Europe, come to London. We're going to help you. We can help you to build a van. We can create another <laughs> British name for it. Uh, and, uh, and congratulations. What an, uh, a great story that you have. And thank you, Andrea, for co-hosting this podcast you, with Mike. me today. Thank you for you know, bringing <laughs> this amazing guest to the Beyond Marketing thank podcast. And for everyone that's listening to us today, I hope you, you really enjoyed this conversation. We, we just didn't talk about market. This is the name of the podcast. It's Beyond Marketing. We talk things that it goes beyond market because that's the purpose of this podcast. So if you're not following us yet, please make sure you do on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, and YouTube. And I'm looking forward to see you, everyone, on our next episode. And Ali, thank you again. You were just incredible. Thank you so much. I love this and I will see you in London. Yes. Thank you guys. Bye.